Daily vlog, day 44. Today is Thursday, and I'm trying out a thing called Three Minute Theology Thursday, where I take a topic about the Christian faith and talk about it for three minutes. Either you've submitted it to me, or I have dug it out of the recesses of my mind. Given the recent debate between Bill Nye, the science guy, and Ken Ham, the not-so-science guy, I decided that I wanted to talk a bit about, no, not creation, about how to read the Bible. There's a lot of confusion and questions about reading the Bible. One of the things that came up during this debate is the idea that Christians believe the Bible is the inerrant word of God. That means that we should take everything that it says, literally, and people like Ken Ham, spend a lot of their time and energy defending their stance on the Bible, seeing it as the infallible word of God. And so that's why you get creationists who say that Earth is, uh, you know, X thousands of years old and that Earth was made in six literal days and, and, and all that. The problem I have at the outset is not so much with the people who interpret it that way. The bigger pet peeve I have with this issue is that people tend to lump Christians into one category. All Christians believe this way. And that's the same kind of logic that says all French people are rude and all Italians are magnificent lovers. Some stereotypes are earned. Just like the old saying, there is more than one way to skin a cat, there are many more than one ways to read the Bible. Each of which preserving a level of reverence and respect for the Word of God. And those ways, I think, get lost in the debate. And so what I wanted to address to you today was not which interpretation is the best or right, but how to read the Bible. How to approach it in a way that respects it for what it is, but also uses logic and reason so that we can find the inspiration and the message that is contained in it for us. When approaching the Bible, you have to remember that this is a book compiled of 66 other books. 66 books written over the span of 3,500 years. What we have in those 66 books are a variety of types of literature. Some are poetry, some are history, some are apocalyptic literature, some are prophecies, some defy categorization. Each genre comes with a different way to read it. We don't read poetry the same way we read instructional letters. We don't read apocalyptic writings the same way we read wisdom literature. In order for us to read the Bible, we have to approach it in context. The context of the type of literature it is, as best we can gather, then we have to read that book in the context of its history. When was it written? Or when do we think it was written? What did it say to the people then? The biggest problem that I see with biblical interpretation today is people reading the Bible from their perspective, assuming that it was written to people just like them. When in reality, it was written to a nomadic people traveling the desert, or uh, a young empire kind of people fending off attacks from other nations, or an enslaved people longing to get back to their homeland, or a ragtag bunch of uh, believers in this upstart who got crucified and rumor has it he rose again. We have to understand who the books were written to and what they were going through at the time in order to understand the context of what's being said to them. Because the problem with taking verses out of context means that we could do a lot of damage. Just ask some female leaders in the church how certain verses were used to keep them from using their God-given gifts. So to read the Bible, you have to understand the genre that it is and the rules about reading that genre. You have to understand the context of it. Who was it written to and what was going on at the time? And then you have to understand the book itself. Many Christians are very good at quoting their favorite verses, like John 3.16. But what is John 3.17 and 18 and 19 and 20 and 21? If we understand the story that the book is trying to tell, if we understand the message that it's trying to give, that will bring more insight and inspiration into those verses that we're quoting. That's a lot of work. Thankfully, there are many resources out there to help us make sense of this. There's pastors, teachers, other Christians. More than that, there are commentaries and background studies and word studies and many, many other resources to help us kind of flesh out what it is we're reading. One of the resources I'd recommend is an article by Stephen Chalk called Restoring Confidence in the Bible. It's a great approach that does not take an ultra right-wing fundamentalist view and doesn't take a so far left, it doesn't make any sense kind of view. I also recommend a video called Reading Genesis 1 in Context, Part 1. Uh, they just released that. It's put out by a group called Seedbed. 
And I'll put a link to that in the doobly-doo. God has given us a beautiful gift that is the scriptures. No, it's not perfect. And yes, it's subject to great stretches of interpretation. But at the core of it is a message of a God who made us and loves us and wants us to know him. The Bible is part of how we get to know him. We should struggle with it. We should argue with it. We should question it. But the one thing we shouldn't do is take it lightly. Let me know in the comments below any questions that you may have about the Bible or certain passages or just certain approaches to it. This has been daily vlog number 44. 321 to go. I'll talk to you tomorrow.